What's going on everybody? So, been pretty busy at work lately. I uh, haven't really been able to touch this car uh, in the last couple of days. And I actually went and bought something yesterday, which I'll show you guys later uh, if there's actually any interest. But it'll be fun because it means uh, one step closer to being able to go to more events with this thing uh, when the time actually comes since obviously it's just a shell. So not really going to be going to any events in this thing anytime soon. But hey, one day I'll actually get done and I'll get there. Uh, also, I got this in the mail today behind me. Uh, I don't know if you can see it. That is an exhaust for the Subaru. So it's just the header um, and like the mid pipe section uh, since I'm going to make pretty much like a cat back exhaust for it um, and route it like a certain way so that it's a little bit higher than uh, a normal like off the shelf exhaust would be. Um, and then I think I'm going to have it exit through the bumper. Uh, we'll see. It looks more rally car if you like go through the bumper and you plate the bumper uh, with like protective shielding with thin sheet metal. But anyway, it's an equal length header. Uh, it's not the best. It's OBX because uh, there's really no one that makes an equal length header for NA25s anymore, uh, which almost all of the dual port Subaru exhausts will work and you can even use the turbo manifold then you just gotta like modify some stuff and run like a different water pump um, and obviously fab up your own type of up pipe uh, since a normal turbo up pipe isn't going to work on a naturally aspirated car with no turbo so eventually when this thing does run it's probably gonna sound like a Honda or at least a little bit more like a Honda than a Subaru uh, but you do get a decent amount of performance gains out of an equal length header uh, so I think it'd be worth it because there's really not much to gain when a naturally aspirated car anyway from just like a normal header that you would get off the shelf. So a decent equal length is actually going to get a little bit more flow. And my plan is to run uh, Delta cams in this thing. So just a little bit peppier of a motor uh, and an intake. So it'll probably be up to like a whopping 155 horsepower to the wheels if even. So super fast for sure. But all this talk about the engine does remind me that I really do need to start disassembling the thing. Uh, I need to get the block off to a machine shop, have it honed, um, have the uh, deck checked and whatnot, and have it hot tanked. Um, that way I can start rebuilding that and get the cams sent off to Delta to have them regrind them. Because uh, if I don't hurry up, that's going to take like a month uh, just in like the machine shop time and me to actually assemble it and whatnot. So if I don't get around to it, eventually. Uh, I'm going to get caught up on this thing uh, and then be waiting on an engine, which I guess that wouldn't really be the worst thing to happen since there's so much work to do to this car still. But uh, speaking of which, uh, I'm going to stop rambling. Uh, sorry for the long intro and rambling. Um, today I'm going to actually start on the roof bar. So last thing I did, which I did some work off camera. So when I finished the windshield bar, I was planning on starting on the roof bars that same day uh, and I ended up not doing that. So I welded in the plates for the rocker boxes to sit on. Uh, as you can see, these are just barely tacked in there right now. Uh, both sides are welded in with their plates. The cage is fully tacked in right now, so it's pretty much exactly where it's going to go. Um, windshield bar is tacked in. Everything's good. So here are the rules that I actually have to follow when I make the roof bar. So I'll throw them up on the screen so you can actually see them uh, if you're interested in doing this build or, or you can just Google it. But anyway, so on this piece of paper, there'll be four um, and you guys can see that there's four different ones. The fourth one doesn't count though. You can't do that uh, as per the FIA rules. As you can see, it has a different name. It's RB TAC4 instead of 253 TAC whatever. Uh, so the 253 rules, obviously those are the FIA rules. Uh, so the designs that I can choose from are the X, obviously, and that's the first one. The V, where the point of the V actually comes forward near the front of the car, and then the opposite V, so the V is coming together onto the uh, main hoop. Now when you're figuring out which bar configuration you actually want to go with, you want to think about which backstay configuration you also want to go with because they kind of coincide with each other uh, in these rules. So if you do the X, that's fine. You can do, if you do the X, you can pretty much do whatever backstays you want. Um, but if you do the 253 TAC uh, 14, where the V comes together uh, near the main hoop, then you have to do the backstays where the V comes together at the main hoop. So it's a backwards V pretty much. Uh, or inverted V. So here with that, I have the backstays as well. So to be able to run 
the inverted V backstay. So the pros and cons to these, uh, for the Vs, the biggest one, you don't need gussets. So if you run the V, you're eliminating the need to make four gussets at least. So if you do the X backstay, uh, as you can see, you got your three choices here. If you do the X, uh, you have to gusset those Xs. And if you do the X in the roof, you also have to gusset those. So that's four more gussets that you have to make. And it's also, you have to make one continuous tube. And then obviously to make the X, you have two pieces of that tube. So it actually takes three cuts. Uh, there's two extra notches involved because of that. So running that, it's not only gonna be easier to make because of the fact that I don't have to cut the tubes in half, do the extra gusseting uh, as well as the extra notching, but I'm going to be able to bend these tubes a little bit extra to get it out of my way uh, for my helmet to actually have a little bit more clearance with the roof. So that's another major plus as well. Well, this is kind of a weird angle going on, but uh, it looks like this is the best way so you guys can actually see what I'm talking about. So the V is going to come, so I'm gonna pick it up right around here on the windshield bar, and then they're gonna to come together to right here. So that's gonna give me plenty of clearance with my head, because uh, they're gonna bow up to follow the roof line. So now I just gotta figure out exactly what my measurements are going to be, um, and they really should be super simple to make, because it is just straight from here to here uh, with one slight bend. Uh, I might just do the bend in the center so the notch kinda of comes up, um, and then they kinda, of angle back down or I could have it come up and then meet it uh, I'm not sure yet I'm gonna look at it a little bit more I gotta get rid of this lift though all right now that we cleared that um, I did forget to talk about one thing so there is rules that you have to comply with when you make the roof bars so if you're making the V or the X it really doesn't matter they have to be within four inches or 100 millimeters of the joint. So that way you get more of like a node, uh, that way the force of a, like a rollover or a crash or something like that is spread out between more bars. Uh, so the closer that they're welded together, the more bars can absorb the impact uh, and take the brunt of it. If they're all welded kind of individually, not really connected to each other, uh, then most of that force is going to be directly applied to just that one bar. So the rule is within four inches of this joint, uh, as well as the rear joint, if you're doing uh, the forward V, so if they come up to here into the point, uh, then the back part has to be within four inches of where your front laterals meet the main roll bar um, and vice versa if you're doing the other one. And then if you're doing an X, then they have to meet in all four corners uh, or within four inches. So obviously with a V, they can't be near a joint at all. So they have to be, if they don't come together and completely touch, they have to be within four inches of each other. So just more variables that you have to think about when you're making it. So they have to end pretty close to each other and they need to be as close to this joint as possible. So with that, we're ready to actually measure and figure out how we're gonna make these. So, from here to the center, 36 inches. So somewhere around here, I want it to come up relatively quick uh, at a decent angle, and then it can flatten out and kind of follow the roof a little bit uh, until it gets to the back, and then I'm gonna do a slight curve downward uh, to meet the main hoop. So, somewhere around here, if it meets the roof, Right about there, 10 degrees. So we'll do 10 degrees for the first bend. Um, and we'll see exactly how that looks. So we're gonna start this bend at six and a half inches. All right, I think I'm gonna do Two more degrees on this, uh, and that'll be good. We'll see what that brings us out to. Um, it looks like it needs to go up just a little bit more, uh, and then I'll mark it to where we can contour this side just down a little bit, uh, and then we'll mark it, get both the notches in, which this notch is gonna be pretty tricky because it's right there in that joint. That'll be pretty easy, uh, just an angled notch. All right, 
Both of the notches fit in there pretty well right now. Obviously, I have to massage them just a little bit. Uh, but I think I'm going to put a little bend down here. So I ended up bending this side to about seven degrees. Um, and as you can see, it's pretty close to the roof now, so I like it a lot more. Uh, this notch lines up great, but it's still about, it covers up the halfway point. So I think it's like, I don't know, a quarter of an inch over too much. So I'm going to take it from this side, uh, if you can even see it, but this notch doesn't really line up that well right now. So I'm gonna take it from right here and just get rid of a little bit of it and it should fit. Uh, that notch came out really good uh, and it is like right at the perfect length uh, for my halfway point on the main hoop uh, to where that they'll almost be touching, uh, like the welds will almost touch each other. If I wanted to, I could probably notch this side a little bit uh, to where it actually will sit more onto the A-pillar side because uh, right now it's just touching it and I can weld it and it would just be welded to it. Uh, but if it was notched a little bit to it, it would probably look a little bit better. But I can make that decision after I make the other bar. Uh, I think I'm done for the night. I'm making a lot of noise and it's, it's only 9.22 but there's a lot of old people around that go to sleep early so Probably not the most appreciative of my loud hammering and uh, to like trying to get the tubes out of the tube bender is actually probably the loudest part. Because uh, that tube that I just bent had a crap ton of mill scale on there. Um, so it really kind of gets stuck into the die. Uh, I think my next cage, I probably am going to use cold rolled steel uh, or cold drawn steel, sorry, not cold rolled. Um, but anyway. I'm going to start on the other one. Uh, now that I have this one done though, it'll be a lot easier to make the other one because uh, I can just figure out exactly how long it is, measure uh, from the outside or whatever, just from bend to bend, and I know my radius is already. The notcher is set up pretty much exactly at the angle that it needs to, so I can just notch it twice with that. Uh, and the other bars should be super quick and easy, um, as long as I don't mess it up. All right, I'm gonna try to get this last bar knocked out. Um, and right now, my wife is awkwardly staring at me, making me laugh this whole time. So this is taking <coughs> quite a few takes as I almost dropped that on my head. Um, anyway, gonna take the dimensions from this one, transfer it over to another tube, um, and then we'll bend it up, notch it real quick. And it should be theoretically quick, but you know, who knows? My memory card was full while I was in the middle of talking about these, but 
<clears throat> anyway, they are both in finally after finessing uh, all of the notches because the notches came out well uh, and they like fit in there really good. But the fact that they were just a tiny bit too long, I couldn't get both of them in there. So I had to just keep slowly removing material until they both fit. But they fit, uh, they're in there with friction right now. So if you see huge gaps in the notches, it's because they're not actually where they go. Uh, that's why they're like this right now. Uh, they're really just holding each other in right now. So I'm happy with how they came out. Uh, I think they look pretty good. They're pretty symmetrical right now. Um, and I don't think I'm gonna change anything with them. Maybe once I actually fully weld everything in uh, and I see that I wanna make any changes with anything like if I want them to tuck up in here a little bit more and actually notch a little bit so it can ride on the A-pillar, uh, then I'll do that. But right now, it's all good and it's well within spec. Well, it went really well uh, except for the notching. So I think I kinda like butt myself in the butt with like when I measure for the notches, I leave a little bit too much material uh, just in case I do mess up the notch. But because I do that, when I do get the notch correct on the first try, which like I did for both of these, so I mean, not like a skill or anything like that. So it's just the measurements are actually working uh, that I'm doing. But because I'm leaving all that excess material, I gotta slowly remove it all uh, to get it to fit. So if I didn't have to remove material slowly to get both of these things in there, I probably would have been done like three hours earlier, uh, which today I've only spent a couple hours on it, but last night was four or so hours. So these bars probably took seven hours to make, which is probably a while for somebody that's been doing this for a long time. So uh, I'm just happy that they turned out well. I mean, I rather waste a little bit more time until I uh, get more experience and go through a whole bunch of tubes. Well, that is plenty for me. I've been rambling for way too long, so I'm gonna go inside. I gotta edit a video. Uh, that's probably all the work that I'll do to the card tonight, because uh, that always takes me a couple hours because I'm slow at editing. But I appreciate you guys watching my videos, as always. Uh, you guys have a good one. Well, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna throw that in there. Welcome back. <laughs> <laughs> You're not camera. <laughs> <laughs>